David Kent here with another question in topic 1.3, Vectors and Scalars. Uh, we have a question about climate scientists in Phoenix. They release a weather balloon at point A, which is over here, uh, and it travels at a velocity of 10 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees to the north of east. So that means a rise by 30 degrees in the north direction from east means it winds up heading this way. The scientists want to follow the balloon. Uh, they're going to drive roughly underneath it in their car. Uh, but the thing is, they're in Phoenix, and the layout of all the roads in Phoenix is, is square. So uh, if they want to follow the balloon, which is traveling at an angle, they have to go uh, across uh, east-west roads and north-south roads to kind of follow it that way. Um, now the balloon is traveling at 10 meters per second, but the speed limit on the roads is 60 kilometers per hour. Uh, will they be able to keep up with the balloon without uh, speeding? Um, so, first let's uh, draw a little diagram. The balloon is going to travel at a rate of 10 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees from north from east. Uh, so the first instinct might be to break 10 meters per second up into a horizontal and a vertical component. Uh, but to, if you did that, uh, what you would get is the scientists traveling along the horizontal road at the same rate that the balloon is traveling east, which means that the balloon might be here and the scientists in their car might be here below it, which means that by the time the balloon is here, the scientists are going to wind up uh, too far to the south. The scientists need to make it all the way to the balloon uh, in the same time that the balloon reaches that point. Uh, so we're not going to break this up into a horizontal and vertical component for the velocity of the balloon. Instead we're going to find out how far the balloon travels from point A to some arbitrary point B maybe some hundred seconds later, and, and that's totally arbitrary. So if, they travel, if the balloon travels for 100 seconds, uh, that means the balloon is going to wind up traveling for uh, 1,000 meters. So that's 10 meters per second for 100 seconds. 10 times 100 is 1,000 meters. So the balloon goes 1,000 meters. The scientists have to go that same distance from A to B, but through this corner C. Uh, so how far do they have to travel? Uh, now we're going to break this 1,000 meters up into components. Uh, so using SOHCAHTOA, we know that we have the opposite side of the right angle triangle based on where the angle is. And so this side is going to be 1,000 meters times the sine of 30 degrees. And here we have the adjacent side of the uh, right angle triangle. So this side is going to be 1,000 meters times the cosine of 30 degrees. Uh, using your calculator, you'll find that uh, this vertical distance is 500 meters, and this horizontal distance is 866 meters. Which means that, for the scientists, the total distance that they have to travel is 1,366 meters, the sum of 500 and 866. So the balloon travels 1,000 meters. The scientists have to travel 1,366 meters, and they both have to do this in the same time. We established that the balloon is going to take 100 seconds to do this. That means that the scientists have to do the same thing. They have to travel 1,366 meters in 100 seconds. Uh, that means that their overall velocity, the distance traveled divided by the time taken, is going to have to be 13.66 meters per second. So in other words, the, the uh, scientists have to be traveling faster than the balloon in order to go this extra distance to point C to get to point B. Uh, simply because they have to follow the roads and the balloon doesn't. So does that mean that they're speeding? Well, now we need to convert 13.66 meters per second into kilometers per hour. So first we'll convert seconds to hours. 
uh, knowing the relationship that there are 60 minutes, uh, nope, 60 seconds in a minute. Uh, and there are 60 minutes in an hour. Okay, so those are the relationships between seconds and minutes and minutes and hours. We just need to decide if we want to multiply or divide. Uh, recognizing that we want to cancel seconds and seconds. I have seconds here and per seconds there. They will directly cancel if I multiply. Same thing with minutes. Minutes will cancel with per minutes as long as I multiply. Uh, so multiplying by 60 and uh, multiplying by 60 again, uh, we find that the speed in kilometers per hour uh, excuse me, the speed in meters per hour is 49,000. So the meters remain, and the per hour remains. Uh, 49,000 meters per hour is 49 kilometers per hour, uh, which is under the speed limit, so they should be fine.